One time I was babysitting and the mom never came home and gave me legal guardianship of her kids. I knew going into it, she was a young single mom with two kids and she just wanted to have a night out with her girlfriend that was in town. I go over to her house. I immediately noticed that it's not just messy, but it's dirty. Personally, I'm like a really clean freak. So I don't judge people based on their living spaces. That being said, it seemed like it may be a hazard to the kids. She does not tell me anything about their bedtime routine. Mind you, they're two and four years old. Like they're really little. She's more worried about showing me her outfit, asking me if it's okay. As she's leaving, she's telling me like, it's gonna be a late night. I was like, yeah, it's totally fine. She was saying maybe 1 a.m., 2 a.m. I was like, girl, do your thing. Okay, I came with receipts. Around 11.30, I asked her if she had like a phone charger just because my phone was about to die and I didn't want to go out to my car and leave the kids because they were already in bed. But as you can see, she literally responded at 2.30 a.m. I waited until 3.45. Hi, do you have a rough ETA? I mean, you can read through all that. By the time I sent this text, it was literally 5 a.m. 5 a.m. and I got there at 7 p.m. Her son wakes up at six. He's asking where mom is. He's so hungry and I'm trying to find him food, but everything in the kitchen is expired or moldy. I talked to my friends at this point. I talked to my family and everyone was like, you need to call the police, which I obviously didn't want to do. I didn't want to put her in a rough situation with CPS or anything. But as a female, I was more concerned about her safety going to the super sketchy bar that's known for different kinds of trafficking. I took the phone call out on the balcony because I didn't want the little boy to hear it. I go onto the balcony. I cannot even step on it because it's all covered in trash bags and like it reeks. Like this has been sitting there for months. There's also like trash bags that crept in like weird closets in the house. The kids did not sleep in beds. They slept on the floor. They didn't know where their toothbrushes were. Little girl wakes up. I have her on my hip. I'm like on the phone with the police. He shares with me that I'm actually in custody of the children. Like they're my responsibility because the mom left them with me. And so if I am to leave, CPS is gonna come and pick up the kids. I obviously don't wanna share like too much of a personal situation, but she shared with me that like the baby daddy was in and out of prison and the cops shared with me that he is like a danger to the family. And I'm sitting there home alone with the kids. So I requested that the cop is present until I leave for me and the children's safety. So here's the cop and the little boy was like sitting right there. He was so entertained by the cop and kept grabbing the cop's gun. Meanwhile, the little girl is like freaking out and I'm just holding her, like trying to calm her down. At 8 a.m., 8 a.m., this bitch calls me and she's like, I'm so sorry. She had a sleepover. She had the audacity to go home from the bar with a man, leave her kids with a babysitter and not say anything. She told me that her phone had died. She didn't know in this phone call that the cops had already tried to contact her and her parents and her phone had been pinged. She comes back. I'm like awkwardly sitting in the kitchen as the cop is interrogating her, like asking her, not interrogating, but you know. He's taking pictures, sending it for CPS. Then the cop leaves me with her. He straight up leaves me with her. And I just apologize profusely. I'm, like, I'm so sorry, I did not want this to end this way. You have to understand I was scared for your safety. The best part of it all is a few days later, she texts me and asks to hang out and be friends and like go do things with the kids. Surprisingly, she did pay me. Yes, I did charge her. Okay, I know this is super zoomed in, but she literally put my name in as a Mary Kay referral. Like, I don't wanna be part of your pyramid scheme. So yeah, that's a story. It's safe to say I never spoke to her again. But don't babysit for people on the internet. Yeah, I would start to worry a lot at this point. Um, and I feel, I do feel for the girl because, you know, she's constantly just, you know, messaging her saying, you know, asking her, you know, just valid questions like her estimated, her ETA, um, you know, um, and when she's going to be back and stuff, which, you know, she has every right to, to do that because, you know, if they've planned it for a certain time, then, you know, I would, I, I would worry. I would definitely worry. And, um, and it's fair because in that message, in that last message that she had sent to the woman, she was like, oh, well, if you don't respond um, by this time, then I would assume that it's an emergency and we, you know, we'll, we'll need to take it from there. So she's been very professional um, with, you know, contacting, um, con yeah, in contacting this woman. Um, so yeah, so the girl has obviously done nothing wrong. Um, the woman, however, she's, mm, she doesn't sound very, um, yeah, she's, she's not very considerate, is she? 